Welcome back everyone. So the first thing I want to say is thank you so much for 1000 subscribers. Uh, we finally reached the first goal and I really appreciate all the love and support that you have given me. Now this is going to be a 1k special subscriber video. In this we are going to be creating this kind of effect. And I've been getting a lot of requests for this kind of design which I've created right over here. And we'll see how we can tackle this, how we can create it this. Now for this you'll need a couple of things. Like the first thing is obviously a skull model or you can use any model that you want. And the second thing is a simple grunge texture that you can see on the floor. And the third thing is the paint which we are going to be creating inside of the Photoshop. Now, uh, unfortunately, I cannot provide this skull model right now because this is going to be in a future pack that I'm going to be releasing very soon. But you can use pretty much any 3D model that you want. If you go to any free 3D website like Turbo Squid or Sketchfab, you can get tons of free 3D models that you can use. And if you don't have that, uh, what you can also do is you can simply go to Windows, General Editor, and connect browser and here you have inside inbuilt we can say models so if you go to modeling menu here and clothing you'll find this fantasy element that you can use as well so you can just drag it and drop it and it will be good to go so you can use this as well if you can't find any good models on the internet apart from that i've downloaded a simple grunge map as you can see right over here and uh, this is just a simple grunge map I've downloaded from Google. You can simply type in grunge map and you'll find tons of free grunge maps. This will be our floor for a nice puddle ground. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's get into uh, Maya. I'm going to drop in my skull here. And uh, this skull I have modeled a base mesh inside of Maya and then I exported it into the ZBrush. And from there, I basically sculpted the overall design. So you can see how dense the overall mesh is right now. Alright, so we have this. I'm going to bring this up just a bit. Something like this. And let me just center pivot this. Okay, so we have our basic model here. I'm going to take another plane here. This will be our flow. And I'm going to make this one and one. I don't think we need that many subdivision. And let's turn off the grid for a minute. Okay, so for the modeling part, everything is done. Uh, I'm just going to call this ground. And this will be a simple skull. And that's it. Okay, so the next thing that we need is we have to create a simple brush or image inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to open up my Photoshop here and this is a 2D canvas. You can simply go to file, new. And as you can see, I've taken a 2K resolution canvas, which is a square canvas. So you can choose 2048 by 2048 for square, square canvas. And let's hit create. Okay, so from here, uh, what you have to do is create a new layer. And if you go to your brush, and right now what I'm using is basically a free downloaded brush from Google. Uh, you can find tons and tons of brushes. If you can't find any more uh, brushes, don't worry about it. I'll put a link in the description for the free website where you can find this type of brushes. So I'm going to be going with this type of brush, something similar to a paint brush kind of thing. And I'll be using this brush. You can use pretty much any brush that you want. So I'm just going to increase the overall size here and until it fits in the overall canvas. So I think this is good. And make sure the color has been set to black because you can later change any color that you want inside of Maya by using simple hyper shade and some shaders. So I'm just going to click one time and you'll notice that it has some kind of transparency with this since this is a watercolor brush. It's supposed to have some tri transparency. And so what you can do here is basically you can click on multiple times to create that opaque effect. Click on multiple times. And as you can see, we do want a little bit of transparency. As you can see right about here, we have some white lines, some gaps around here, which we do want since this is a paint brush. We want that feel to be look like just like a paint brush. So I'm going to keep it just like that. And if you want to do a little bit extra like I've done in here, I think, yeah, in this one, you can see. So what you can do is basically you can take another layer you can choose a different brush and from here just scale your brush up and just click one time or multiple times how dark you want it and from here you can hit ctrl t on your keyboard to get into the transform and from here right click warp now you can warp this into any kind of form that you want and you can create whatever look that you're going for and uh, from here you can just Align this something like this, hit Ctrl J to duplicate the layer, Ctrl T to transform and then flip horizontal and you can align it over here. So you can create this kind of brush as well. I think I'm going to stuck with one brush for this one and I'm going to save this now. Okay, so I'm going to call this paint 
and I'm gonna save this in JPEG and let's hit save okay so here as you can see we have our brush here so let's open our Maya again let's close our Photoshop we don't need it anymore okay so from here I'm going to open up my hyper shade and the first material that we are going to be creating is a mix shader and the reason we are using a mix shader because we have to combine multiple shaders to get that kind of effect so the first shader that we are going to be creating that going to be plugged into our mix shader will be a standard surface i'm going to delete the output since we don't need it and connect it to shader 2. now this will be our matte black so i'm just going to call this a simple black and let's make the weight to one color to a bit darker and roughness value to about 0.4 or something like that okay so i think our black material has been done and from here i'm going to take another stand surface which will be our gold material so if you'll notice the image as you can see the rest is a complete black texture and the rest is a complete gold with the painted effect so what you can do is you can simply go to the preset and take a simple gold all right i'm going to call this gold just so it's neat and clean and plug this into the shader one okay I'm gonna close this Let's close this okay so once you are done with this what we have to do is add another thing that is our paintbrush so I'm just going to open up my browser here um, and just drag your paint effect paintbrush and drop it in your hyper shape so we have our image here and what we are going to do is basically open up your color and attach out color to the mix and that's it so if you'll notice you can't actually see the overall effect here right now and uh, if i'll show you the overall image here we have something like this if you want to just make it a bit more contrast what you can do is you can take another color correct node from here and you can pretty much attach a color in here and you can play around with the contrast value of maybe a two and this way let me just refresh this and from here as you can see the overall result gets a bit more darker so this is how you can overall control the overall effect if you want i think i'm pretty happy with the overall results i'm going to connect the overall rgbr to the overall mix and i think that is good to go so i'm going to take a simple sphere just to test it out and i'm going to open up my ipr run this take a physical sun and sky and i'm just going to pause this for a minute and make sure the test resolution is around 75 percent and let's apply a mix shader all right okay so now if you'll notice around here let me just make this 100 percent and hit f and i think uh, we can isolate this from here yeah uh, it's kind of let me just move this out okay so if you'll notice on this side you'll notice that we have this gold shader here and uh, if I just zoom in here uh, let me just it's consuming too much of the power all right so now you can see this kind of effect going on so we have the matte black on the rest of the sphere and we have just the painted gold brush here so that's why we use a simple mix shader to combine multiple shaders okay so from here I'm going to close this now and get out of my isolation mode all right, so I'm going to apply my simple mix shader here and in the attributes, I'm going to call this painted. All right, so I think it is good to go. Now, one thing to keep in mind right now, we haven't actually UV'd or UV unwrapped anything on this. So this can be, you can say overlaid anywhere. So if I just hit IPR, so we have something like this. So what I can do here is if I go to my UV editor, and uh, let's look at the UV. So you you can see it has a pretty distorted UVs right now. So what I can do here just to make this a bit more simple, I can go to UV and I can choose a spherical UV mapping. And from here I can just wrap the whole skull around it. So I can make 360 on the horizontal sweep and 180 on the vertical sweep. So we have a complete spherical UV unwrapping on top of our skull. So I think this should be good to go. Now from here I can go back to my IPR to check all right so now we have a perfect painted skull exactly where we want it to be all right so for, from here if you want to let's say if you want to change anything like for example how the overall material is placed or if you want a bit more tiling or something like that what you can do is you can rotate this to wherever you want and uh, this way you can get a pretty much dramatic look for the overall 
looks i think this one is looking quite good so i can go with that or i can also stick to this one i think this one is looking pretty good as well or you can also do is you can repeat the overall uvs and you you can have a multiple brush with the overall so i can uh, add a bit more brush to this and that will i don't think i'm going to go for the tiling but yeah if you want to use that you can so let's see if we can find something interesting here and I'm really liking the overall look right about there and uh, I think we can go with this so I'm going to close this now and let's create our flow all right so I'm going to create a new material here this will be a stand surface and let's call this a simple flow okay I'm going to make this a complete black and a little bit of metallic 0.2 and open up our hyper shape okay so from here I'm going to go to my graph network right click on your material and graph network and from here I'm going to drop in my grunge map which I've downloaded to hypershade and simply attach this what you can do is you can attach this to the specular roughness and you'll see you have this kind of right now it has a bit more you can say much rougher look towards this but you can do one thing you can simply go to UNL and you can search for a color correct node and you can control the overall grunge map the grunginess the overall roughness on this with your color correct node so i'm just going to hit is luminance just in case if we although we don't have any alpha but still and i'm going to decrease a bit of gamma here and increase a bit more contrast so i can get more revealing here all right so this looks quite good and i can attach this to the overall specular roughness here okay so we have this kind of look so now you'll see that you can get much better result since we have adjusted the overall grunge map and before it was just let me just open this up and you can attach this as well before we have this and from here let me just close this and now we have this and from here what i can do is i can increase a bit more contrast and I can get much more revealing result as you can see right about here if I decrease my contrast to 1 you'll notice how the overall look changes and Maya just requires some refresh with the hyper shade so make sure you always do that because it won't give you the final updated version so I'm going to make this around 2.1 maybe all right I'm going to deattach this to see how this is looking this is looking quite good and uh, from here I'm going to attach this back and I think this is good to go so let's turn our IPR on okay so this is looking quite good and if you think the overall grunge map is a bit too big for this uh, let me just increase the overall intensity of our physical sun and sky to maybe like a two and let me just yeah okay so if you'll notice that overall the overall grunge map here it's too big for the overall design what you can do if you want what you can do is you can do the same tiling process so there we go so here we have place 2e texture here and this is basically all the coordinates and everything that we needed and from here you can just add a bit more tiling towards this and you'll see how this is changing on the overall design but i think i'm going to keep it to one and if i don't like it i can always go back and change it okay so from here let's get into the overall lighting part so i'm going to delete my physical sun and sky here and i'm just going to take a simple unlight here and bring this up and scale this up okay so from here i can pretty much go into the panel here and i can click on look to select it and from here i can just manually place my overall area light so i'm going to kind of keep the overall look towards the three point lighting kind of thing or i can use simple two point lighting as well so i'm going to keep it right about there and i can duplicate this and i'm going to go to my panel look through selected and i'm going to place it right about there okay so let's go to a perspective view if you hit spacebar you'll get all this menu and from here you can click on maya and then perspective view okay so let's bring this a bit backwards okay so i think this is looking quite good now and let's see how this is looking so before that we have to take a simple camera i'm going to take my camera here get into your camera and hit f on your keyboard to focus this and i'm going to move my overall floor here towards a little bit backwards and i'm going to make sure my canvases has been set to 1k square and from here i'm going to turn on my film gate 
Okay, so this is the overall canvas that we have and we have to adjust the overall look from here. So I'm going to keep it to something right about there and I'm going to lock my camera. So as you can see, we have some revealing of the BG here. So I'm going to move my plane just a little bit backwards or you can scale up your plane as well, whatever suits you. Okay, so from here, let's go into the Anil IPR and let's see how this is looking. Okay, so we don't see anything uh, and that is because we don't have enough exposure on our light and uh, let me just go back to perspective so this is our key light i'm going to name this just so it's a bit easier for us to play around with it all right so i'm going to go to my key and just make this about four and let's see let's make this six eight until we see enough so right now you can see we get this kind of look exactly how it's supposed to be and i can go towards my fill light and i can use something like maybe a six just so it's filling the overall shadows here maybe eight and i think we have to decrease the overall exposure because we haven't actually added our volumetric lighting yet so let's do that first so i'm going to go to my render settings here go to unrender and from here go to environment click on this checker icon to add a atmosphere and i'm going to choose create atmospheric volume so if I turn this on, you won't see anything happening. And the reason is because we ha haven't set any density to this. So I'm going to make this somewhere about 0.100 or maybe like 200, whatever suits you, how much denser you want. And as you can see, it completely explodes the overall exposure here. So I'm going to go back to my fill light here and I'm going to make this four and key light to be somewhere like two, actually four and this will be two. Okay, so now we have something like so let's uh, start increasing our key light accordingly all right so we get this kind of look now there's one more thing that we have to adjust with our overall atmosphere volume here and that is anostropy and anostropy kind of gives you this bloomy look it kind of increases more uh, exposure towards the light so i'm going to make this somewhere about 0.5 okay so you can see the overall density is getting kind of decreased because we are getting more exposure towards the light and i'm going to increase the samples to 12. Okay, so from here, uh, if you want a bit more absorption with the overall atmosphere, you can increase attenuation and that will just get out, get rid of the more dense look. So you can increase density even more and you can get rid of by simply increasing attenuation and that will just, that, this is just simple absorption. So I don't think I'm going to use that, but yes, it's there. So we can play around with it if you want to. I'm going to go back to my fill light and make the number four and you'll notice that we have too much atmosphere here right now and the reason is because both of our lights are emitting volume so we don't want any volume emitting from our overall fill light here so i'm going to make the volume samples to complete zero so right now this light is only emitting light no atmosphere no volume whatsoever so i'm going to make this something like maybe a five i think four is good enough and with the key light i'm going to make this 10 and we can see much more volume here so i can go back to and if you want to cre um, kind of control the overall volume here you can also do one thing and that is the spread right now it's kind of spreading all the way from here like this so we can decrease this and it will only emit towards the front where the light is kind of pointing and you'll see this kind of effect going on so you can go for this as well if you want so we have much more sharper volumes here right here as you can see so I'm going to make this one, I'm going to stop this, I can go back to my atmosphere volume and I can turn this on and I'm going to increase a bit more attenuation and let's see until how I get a much more cleaner result and I'm going to make this 0.8, maybe like 0.6, okay. So this looks a bit more good to me, I think I'm pretty happy with the overall result here and I'm going to select this, I'm going to make this maybe a 12 here so we have much more light and uh, the next thing i'm going to do is maybe change the overall direction here of the overall light so let me just close this down and hit re on your keyboard and simply rotate this until you can see a much more and i'm going to scale this a bit okay so we have something like this a bit of a top light here and from here you can just play around with the overall lighting effect if you want to just play around with the overall look how you want to create and if you want a bit more dramatic look what you can use is a simple color temperature as well with the overall lighting 
and you can do the same with this and I'm going to pause this select this light you can use color temperature and you can get into the positive direction which will be much more higher towards the blue and you can increase a bit more volume here and you you'll get this kind of look if you want a bit more dramatic look so I don't think I'm going to go for that uh, but yes if you want you can create something of your own by using this simple values and apart from that uh, you can also make the overall roundness of the area light and that will just give you much more cleaner look if you are going for that and if you are not happy with the overall volume look what you can do is you can get rid of the volume here you can simply right click break connection and what you can also use is a simple AI fog and I'm gonna get into the fog so right now the way you use a fog is basically in coordinates like in all the axis for right now this is X Y Z so right now as you can see this has been set to a complete Z direction if I go to the perspective view here you can see this is the horizon line which is kind of incorrect for this so I'm gonna make this one in the Y and I'm gonna make this zero so right now we have this straight fog here all right so I'm gonna get back into my camera and I'm gonna set this to camera as well and I can go back to my AI fog and from here you can increase the overall distance if you want much more denser fog kind of thing and I can make this 0.3 and I'm gonna make the ground point to somewhere like minus 5 maybe and this is just pushing the overall fog here towards the negative direction that means going more towards the overall bottom here so if I go to my perspective view so right now what you can see the horizon line if I go back to my AI fog here and if I keep de decreasing this so you'll notice that it's kind of going below the overall plane here so if I make this something like a zero and you can see the overall fog here and if I make this something like point minus five you'll see something like this so I can increase more height from here if I want much more denser fog and I can go back to camera here switch back to the camera here and here you can see we have a foggy look as well so you can choose uh, whatever fog color you want with this a bit more dramatic if you want and from here you can play around with different kinds of looks so I can increase a bit more height maybe like a 9 and I think we are good to go so this was it this was the overall design of how I did it and you can play around with different kinds of look you can add a bit more paint brushes towards this and if you can't find any model you can use a simple uh, control browser from Maya and you can use anything from here it's completely free and everything and for the lighting you can pretty much experiment with anything or whatever suits you there are a lot of different methods you can use atmosphere you can use fog you can use a simple three-point lighting or whatever suits you and uh, apart from this this was if you have any question feel free to ask me you can connect with me on my social media if you want to if you have any question regarding this type of design and uh, again thank you so much for 1k subscribers i have a pretty big hopes for this channel and slowly and gradually we will be moving forward with the overall 3d industry how we can learn blender cinema 4d houdini so slowly we'll going to be learning all of those softwares and different types of render engine as well so i have pretty big hopes for this channel and this is just a start so i'm really happy for the 1k subscribers so again thank you for all the love and support and uh, if you have any question feel free to ask me and if you can't find any brushes don't worry i'll be linking uh, the link in the description of where you can find this watercolor brushes and grunge map are pretty easy to find you can simply google them okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i've been getting a lot of requests for this type of design so create something out of it if you do create something out of it show me on my instagram i love to see your work and uh, Stay home, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.